Hey guys, and welcome to Crypto Mining Insider. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to do dual coin mining of Ethereum and Ravencoin in NiceHash using the latest T-Rex miner. I'm going to be sharing my best overclocks with you, and we're going to be even plugging in a meter at the wall to show actual power draw of the GPU and calculate profitability more accurately. This and a wealth of other tips, so stay tuned. Don't forget to press down on that subscribe button if you haven't already. Let's get started. In today's video, we're going to be covering dual coin mining of Ethereum and Ravencoin. We're going to be building upon the skills we covered previously in our Unlock LHR using NiceHash and the T-Rex Miner. In this video, we've shown how to install and configure the T-Rex Miner in NiceHash and how to do dual coin mining of Ethereum and Ergo and Ethereum and Conflux. We're going to be building upon those skills today. So if you haven't already watched that video, pause this video now. I encourage you to watch this video first. It contains a lot of knowledge we're going to be building upon today. We're going to be using the same PC and equipment we used in our previous video, a Founders Edition RTX 3070 graphic card on the motherboard and an EVGA 3080 Ti LHR graphic card, which is the primary graphic card doing our dual coin mining today. Building upon what we've already accomplished in our previous video, let's go into the T-Rex folder where we downloaded. So under downloads, we downloaded the T-Rex miner and we've expanded into its own folder and we've already made any necessary exceptions in antivirus software. So we shouldn't have any problems at this point. Moving forward, the files we're interested in are the ones for dual mining and they start with LHR-unlock dual. We already handled the Conflux and Ethereum as well as uh, Ethereum and Ergo in our previous video. Today, we were just working on Ethereum and Ravencoin. Copy the file and we're gonna paste it right back into our own directory, except we're going to rename it dash. Nice hash. With that done, let's edit the file. And of course we get a Windows warning on it. Yes, I wanna open this to edit it. This is the batch file. When I run it, it will actually start up the T-Rex miner and it will tell it, hey, go join against this mining server. Use this wallet to put the money in the rewards. In this case, there's actually two servers it's gonna to have to connect to because it's doing dual mining. So it's gonna to have to connect to a server for Ravencoin and as well as it's gonna to have to connect to a server for Ethereum. The best part is, is since it's all going back to NiceHash, we're gonna be using the same wallet. So there's only four values we're gonna to have to change and then we'll be ready to use it. If we break the file down, we have trex.exe. This tells trex miner to open. Dash A is the algo. So for Ethereum is the algorithm, it's telling us ET hash. Next one is this LHR algo pow. That tells it the alternate. So the secondary algorithm we're gonna be mining is Kapow. Kapow is the algorithm for Ravencoin. None of that we have to touch just for information purposes. Now we get to dash O and that specifies a stratum server. This stratum server corresponds to the name of the first algorithm. So this is for Ethereum hash, it's the first one. Stratum is a pooling protocol and a stratum server is a pooling protocol server. So we have to connect to the NiceHash servers. Fortunately for us, NiceHash supports a bunch of different coins go into their stratum generator. It's under nicehash.com. There'll be a link for it below for you to click into it, as well as there'll be a batch file, the complete batch file we're making right now. They'll be pasted down below in the description and it'll just have a parentheses that's two for a wallet. So you'll just have to paste your wallet in there. And if you use that batch file, it's gonna automatically be pointing to the NiceHash on the East Coast of the USA. That's just a quick jump start. And we come in here and we can choose what's the desired algorithm. We're gonna be mining Ethereum first off. So that's Dagger Hashimoto my location is USA East. I generate it and now this is the stratum server that I need to talk to if I'm going to be mining Ethereum on NiceHash. I come to this first dash O and this is the first stratum server I'm going to have to replace. The next value I have to change is dash U. U is like the user but it really signifies the wallet. We go to NiceHash and then go into our NiceHash login Go to mining address and you'll get your mining address right there. Copy the mining address and come back here to dash U. Paste it. The only thing I'm going to ask you to add to this suggest is add a name. What do you want to name this rig? Because since we're not controlling this in NiceHash, this is a managed rig, let's give it a name. So when we go into NiceHash to see our rewards or how well it's mining, at least it has a meaningful name, especially if you have more than one, then it shows up multiple default on managed. You can't easily determine the difference. So I'm going to name this ETHRVN rig. Ethereum Raven rig. Okay, that worked. Let's save this. Now we have the next stratum server we're going to have to change. So this is for the second algorithm, and this is for Kapow. And Kapow is Ravencoin. Nice hash, go to the stratum generator. Let's look for Kapow. Generate the address. 
copy it and we are going to go to this dash URL too in the stratum. Replace this with the one we just got for Kapow for Stratum Server. And then the last piece is going to ask us, wait, user to. Just go back and copy the same value used for the user because we're nice hash, we have the same wallet. We're not going to multiple wallets for it. So just copy this value of your wallet address and the name you put and replace it with dash user to with the same exact wallet. There's one final parameter I want to add because if you recall from the previous video, I have two graphic cards in this computer. On device one, it's a 3070. It's a full hash rate card. Device two is a 3080 Ti. And that's the one I want to run dual mining with. I don't want to do dual mining on the 3070 because that's a full hash rate card. After the trex.exe, I'm going to specify dash D for device one. And that tells the T-Rex miner only include device number one in this mining. And if you had multiple devices, you could put comma two, comma three, comma four. You could specify them in there. We're all set with this. Let's close it down. And we have our batch file already. The only remaining item we have to do is let's bring up MSI Afterburner. And this card has zero overclocking on it. When I go to the T-Rex document that I'm going to put the link down below, this actually gives a wealth of information on guidance for some of the overclocking for dual mining. So they're suggesting Ethereum and Raven for the 3080 Ti, I should be a power limit of 82% with a thousand memory core clock zero. Let's move us to 82% and memory 1000. And let's see if we, it makes any difference. It's saying the target hash rate for the unlocker, that's the auto tune, I guess, uh, coming in and saying it should be about 35.07 mega hash, but it's already getting a, an overclock error. It's already saying LHR is detected, so it's going to try to back off on the LHR. I wish it was a little bit more documented because there's a lot of trial and error and there's a lot of variables you can put into place with the dual mining. Resuming mining, changing LHR target from 30 to 29. So now that means it's going from its 30 point, it's moving to 29. It'll actually try to mine less Ethereum and more Raven coin. And in my experience, once it starts going from 30 to 29 or 28, it tends to start snowballing. And before you know it, you'll end up down at a very low number and it's not very efficient. Uh, but see, LHR detected again. It's going to keep backing that algorithm down again. Now, I'm using the exact overclock that they've told me to use in that document. But don't rely on that document as being a Bible. Sometimes you have to be a little creative, do some research, do some Googling, or even just put a comment down below. I'm going to be sharing my overclock that I'm going to end up with at the end of this video, and hopefully it'll help you. There's testing and there's trial and error to it. Again, LHR detected. So that's not what I want. Let me close this miner down. I think this power limit is too high. Let me bring it down to like 75. And we're going to start a miner again. That's one thing that's kind of hard with the dual mining. When you're doing straight mining, you can just put a number in and you see very quickly what, what the difference is. Is my hash rate going up? Is it going down? Is it thermal throttling? But And you can just adjust it and then it just keeps refining until you get it there. But with the dual mining, it's different. You have to make either stop the miner, make the change, start the miner again. And then you'll see the changes. Or sometimes it'll take a while before the changes be able to be optimized, I guess, because of the auto tuner. You have to watch that change and how it runs over time because sometimes stuff will look like it's running okay. And then all of a sudden it could improve or it could even get worse. You don't have that instant response that we're used to when we're doing, you know, straight single coin mining. So it's saying our target hash rate. Okay, good. We're doing much better now. We are at 40 mega hash on Ethereum and we're getting 34 on uh, Raven. So that's a big step forward. Best part is I'm seeing my LHR number right here. LHR is giving me 30. So it's staying. It's not getting better. It's not getting worse. At least it's stable. So that's a great first sign. Let's just make a quick reference to that document. So according to the document from the GitHub page for T-Rex, they give some guidance on the overclocks, but they also say I should be able to get 35.7 mega hash for Ethereum and 29 on Raven. We want to hit that or hopefully even better. Okay, we're at 36 right now for Ethereum. That's great. And we're at 35 on Raven. So we're doing much stronger even on the Raven. I'm happy with this as a good starting point, but I'm going to keep working and tweaking these numbers. Let this miner run over time and let me see what type of overclocks I can come back to and how much I can improve this. I have been mining for over the last four hours on this session now and my numbers are fantastic. Look at this. I'm getting 48.9, almost 49 mega hash for Ethereum 
and 32 on Ravencoin. That's fantastic. Again, 48.87 on Ethereum, 32 on Ravencoin. And that far exceeds even what was in the GitHub document from T-Rex. When I open up the GitHub document, it shows for Ethereum and Raven for a 3080 Ti, I should be getting about 35.7 mega hash. And I'm getting about 10 more, 12 more than that. For Raven should be 29.6. I'm getting like two to three more than that. Power limit 82, memory 100, overclock. My overclocks are different from that. I'm actually dialed down a little bit more on the memory. I'm only doing 72 on my power, but I chose plus 100 on the core clock because I felt it would do a little bit better for the Raven coin. But my memory is a little bit higher. I'm running a 1300, not a thousand. These numbers are just spot on dialed. Wow, 50 Ethereum right now. 50 on the Ethereum. 32, this is 53 on Ethereum. I'm never gonna turn this miner off at this rate. It's gonna be on this computer forever. I'm very, very pleased with these numbers. You will notice too, my temperature's running a little hotter right now. That's because I turned the fans back lower just so I could do this recording temporarily. But other than that, they would be a lot better. My LHR number, which is really the LHR tuning number, it's actually in the high 30s. And that really represents that I'm actually getting a higher ratio of Ethereum than I would be of getting Ravencoin, which to me, that's a good win. That means I'm running very, very efficient, but I'm not seeing any LHR locks whatsoever. Also to my rejected shares is like almost non-existence. This is really humming along and it's doing great. When I open up NiceHash, I can see this last mining session, it's very, very balanced. If you look at the slope of these curves and the ratio then too of what it would be for Ethereum versus uh, Ravencoin, it's much more balanced on this session. On a previous session, I was trying to adjust the overclock and it seemed like the autotune algorithm kicked in for it and it just kept deteriorating and deteriorating. And so the lesson I've learned is that if you're playing with your overclocks and the miner is going the wrong way or it starts decreasing, the LHR number down to like below 30, then you're better off stopping and restarting the miner because it'll become like a snowball. It just keeps going down. And it went down until I think it was mining Ethereum at like 11 or 12. Back on target, this number is out to me. It's outrageous. I'm super happy with it. When I look at power numbers, I could see according to the miner, I have 287 watts. I have a power meter and I hooked it up just to bring this to light. I am actually seeing we're about 350 watts. So our true wattage, this graphic card is pulling, is about 350 watts. This graphic card is isolated on its own power supply, just on this meter, just for this test. I would use the 350 watt number to gauge my profitability and doing all my calculations. I think the 287 watts that the miner is showing is not really including the fans or any of the RGB or maybe even the memory electricity that it needs. The last point I want to touch on today is the auto-tune logic. And this applies not only to the Ethereum and Raven, but it applies to the other dual mining logics too. So if it's Ethereum and Ergo or Ethereum and Conflux. The LHR number by default it's going to be starting off with is LHR of 30. That's its initial balance of how much to go for Ethereum and how much to go for the other altcoin, my case of Raven. If that number is stable and it's getting it easily, it'll actually start moving that LHR number up. And when that LHR number is up, it'll actually go after more Ethereum and less of the altcoin. And if it's still good, it'll keep trying to go up higher. Now it'll go from 30 to 31 to 32. The higher that number gets is the more it's going to try to get for the Ethereum and less of the altcoin. Same way too, on the contrast, if it's working adversely or if it's hitting LHR lock, it'll go down. You could go from 30 to 29, 28 if it's having an adverse, in which case it goes for less Ethereum. My case, I've already been running for a while. I've seen hours of tests and I see my LHR number it finally got to, and it took a lot of time, is 37. So when it gets up to 37, woohoo, it's getting more Ethereum and it's getting less Ravencoin. For me, that's great. It gives me a great balance. The problem is, is keep in mind that number of 37. When I close the miner down, as I'm doing right now, and I restart a new miner, it forgets it. It's going to start off with that LHR number of 30 again. So it kind of became dumb and it's restarting back in its midpoint and little by little it's getting a less, right now it's getting the default value of Ethereum and the altcoin. And little by little it'll see, oh okay, I'm good and I can go from 30 to 31 and I get a little bit more Ethereum and a little bit less Raven. And then it goes from 31 to 32 to 30, but it can sometimes take a few hours for the order tune to get up that high. Fortunately for us though, we don't have to wait like hours and hours for it to, you know, resuming 
and get to its optimal mining spot. I can just prove this to you. Okay, see, we're at LHR 30 and I'm getting 39, which is still a very respectable number. Before I was in the mid to high 40s, but I don't want to kind of start by the bottom of the stairs again until it eventually gets to the more optimal point. I'm going to close this miner down, edit this miner here. So I know my optimal tune for this overclock is 37. So after the LHR, I'll go Kapow, which is the second algorithm. And before the stratum, I'm going to put in this command, dash dash LHR dash tune 37. And this kind of tells the auto tune, hey buddy, start at 37, don't start at zero. This way we don't have to wait for it to build up to that point again. This also helps out a lot when you're trying to do tests or you test your overclocks. You don't want to wait for it to get to a certain point or certain optimal value. You can just kind of say, hey, start right here and it becomes more repeatable. If we do that, we save it, close this down. Let's start again. Except this time when we start, we've already planted the seed and we've told the LHR auto tune, hey, start at 37. So it's going to work from our efficient number right from the start. We went right to the front of the line, right to our most efficient number, and that's a better place for us to start. So I hope this tip helps you. It definitely helps us. There's a lot of other information to cover on auto tune. This is just the tip of the iceberg. We got some videos going to be coming out. So again, if you haven't hit that subscribe, smash that subscribe button now. We're going to be hitting you with a lot of great information in uh, future videos. We hope this tip helps. A really cool tool that's built into the T-Rex Miner is its ability to do monitoring. I can look at the screen and I can get an accurate number of what's going on at that moment. But for me to look at any historical data or see what's happened, it's virtually impossible. Every time it scrolls, it reverses. You don't want to look through a log file. It's like sifting through eternity. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. And that's where their built-in monitor comes into place. Wouldn't it be great if there was a graphical way for us to see things and get a better picture of what's going on? And that's what's built right into it. With the T-Rex Miner, they actually make a local web page that's only local to your computer. And you just got to put in 127.0.0.1 colon 4067. You can see a graphical representation of everything going on. Look, we have Ethereum. This is our hash rate, power shares uptime, some watchdog information. You could even see a graph if there's any problems. You would never find that if you were back here scrolling in this and seeing what's happening and why it'd be some outlier that may be happening. And in the event of dual mining, like I am actually dual mining currently Ethereum and Ravencoin. I'm only seeing Ethereum here, but if I click over to this number two, wow, look, now I'm switching over to Kapow. So I'm at Ravencoin too. And I see also any anomalies or problems and it lets you look at it across different time intervals to really see what's going on. And this just helps to paint a better picture over time. Some other useful information that I like about this is if you go into the settings and in the main settings, you'll see a lot of useful information, the pool settings. These are the stratums we connected to in our batch files, some other information on GPU settings and other settings for Afterburner. But if you look into the raw config, that would be all the raw default configuration values that are set in this miner. So if you wanted to see, you know what the core clock is, the GPU in its state or just any extraneous value, it's, it's there. The pools you're connected to as well. There's just a wealth of information here. You can find this if you go to the GitHub page. There's a section that's HTTP API. Copy this address. I can open a new web browser, a plain page, just paste that address in. Boom, voila. Now you have T-Rex Miner GUI, just a great tool. I think it'll help you be able to monitor your rigs a lot better and seeing how it's running over time. So I hope this helps you. In this video, we've covered how to do dual mining with Ethereum and Ravencoin, how to configure it and use the optimal overclocks to get the highest hash rates possible. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up like. Smash down on that subscribe button if you haven't already. We welcome all your questions and comments. Please put them down below. Until then, we'll see you in the next video. Happy mining!